in computer network security, session fixation attacks attempt to exploit the vulnerability of a system which allows one person to fixate another person's session identifier. Most session fixation attacks are web-based, and most rely on session identifiers being accepted from URLs or post data. Attack Scenarios Alice has an account at the bank http unsafe.example.com slash. Unfortunately, Alice is not very security savvy. Mallory intends to target Alice's money from her bank. Alice has a reasonable level of trust in Mallory, and will visit links Mallory sends her. Equals a simple attack scenario equals, straightforward scenario, Mallory has determined that http, unsafe.example.com slash. Accepts any session identifier, accepts session identifiers from query strings and has no security validation. Http, unsafe.example.com slash. Is thus not secure. Mallory sends Alice an email, hey, check this out. There is a cool new account summary feature on our bank, http, unsafe.example.com slash, question mark sid equal i underscore will underscore no underscore the underscore sid. Mallory is trying to fixate the sid to I will know the sid. Alice is interested and visits http, unsafe.example.com slash, Question mark sid equal i underscore will underscore no underscore the underscore sid dot the usual log on screen pops up, and Alice logs on. Mallory visits http, unsafe.example.com slash. Question mark sid equal i underscore will underscore no underscore the underscore sid and now has unlimited access to Alice's account. Equals attack using server generated sid equals. A misconception is that servers which only accept server-generated session identifiers are safe from fixation. This is false. Scenario, Mallory visits http, vulnerable.example.com slash, and checks which SID is returned. For example, the server may respond, set cookie, SID equals OD6441 FEA4496 C2. Mallory is now able to send Alice an email, check out this new cool feature on our bank, http, vulnerable.example.com slash, question mark sid equal od6441 fea4496 c2 dot, Alice logs on, with fixated session identifier sid equals od6441 fea4496 c2. Mallory visits http, vulnerable.example.com slash, Question mark sid equal OD6441 FEA4496 C2 and now has unlimited access to Alice's account. Equals attacks using cross subdomain cookie equals, this is like cross site cookie, except that it does not rely on browser vulnerabilities. Rather, it relies on the fact that wildcard cookies can be set by one subdomain that affect other subdomains. Scenario a website www.example.com hands out subdomains to untrusted third parties, one such party, Mallory, who now controls evil.example.com, lures Alice to her site, a visit to evil.example.com sets a session cookie with the domain example.com on Alice's browser, when Alice visits www.example.com, this cookie will be sent with the request, as the specs for cookies states, and Alice will have the session specified by Mallory's cookie. If Alice now logs on, Mallory can use her account. Each of these attack scenarios has resulted in cross-collation, where Mallory has successfully gained access to the functions and data normally reserved for Alice. An alternate attack scenario does not require Alice to log into a site. Rather, simply by fixing the session, Mallory may be able to spy on Alice and abuse the data she enters. For example, Mallory may use the above attacks to give Alice her own authenticated session a euro so Alice will start using the site with all the authentication of Mallory. If Alice decides to purchase something on this site and enters her credit card details, Mallory might be able to retrieve that data by looking through the historical data stored for the account. This type of session fixation exploitation differs from the classic exploitation scenarios since it happens in the unauthenticated part of an application or reverses the authentication. Countermeasures 
equals do not accept session identifiers from GET slash post variables equals session identifiers in URL or post variables are not recommended as they simplify this attack a euro it is easy to make links or forms which set GET slash post variables. Additionally, session identifiers in query strings enable other risk and attack scenarios. The SID is leaked to other servers through the referrer. The SID is leaked to other people as users cut and paste interesting links from the address bar into chat, forums, communities, etc. The SID is stored in many places. Note, cookies are shared between tabs and popped up browser windows. If your system requires to be hit with the same domain, cookies may conflict with one another between tabs. It may be required to send the session identifier on the URL in order to overcome this limitation. If possible use site1.example.com or site2.example.com so there is no domain conflicts in the cookies. This may incur costs with extra SSL certificates. This behavior can be seen on many sites by opening another tab and trying to do side-by-side -side search results. One of the sessions will become unusable. Best solution, identity confirmation, this attack can be largely avoided by changing the session ID when users log in. If every request specific to a user requires the user to be authenticated with the site, an attacker would need to know the id of the victim's login session. When the victim visits the link with the fixed session id, however, they will need to log into their account in order to do anything important as themselves. At this point, their session id will change, and the attacker will not be able to do anything important with the anonymous session id. A similar technique can be used to solve the phishing problem. If the user protects their account with two passwords, then it can be solved to a great extent. This technique is also useful against cross-site request forgery attacks. Solution: Store session identifiers in HTTP cookies. The session identifier on most modern systems is stored by default in an HTTP cookie, which has a moderate level of security as long as the session system disregards GET post values. However, this solution is vulnerable to cross-site request forgery, and it does not meet the statelessness requirement of REST. Solution: Utilize SSL-TLS session identifier. When enabling HTTPS security, some systems allow applications to obtain the SSL-TLS session identifier. Use of the SSL-TLS session identifier is very secure but many web development languages do not provide robust built-in functionality for this. SSL TLS session identifiers may be suitable only for critical applications, such as those on large financial sites, due to the size of the systems. This issue, however, is rarely debated even in security forums. Equals regenerate SID on each request equals a countermeasure against session fixation is to generate a new session identifier on each request. If this is done, then even though an attacker may trick a user into accepting a known SID, the SID will be invalid when the attacker attempts to reuse the SID. Implementation of such a system is simple, as demonstrated by the following, get previous session identifier OLD SID from HTTP request. If OLD SID is null, empty or no session with SID equals OLD SID exists, create a new session. Generate new session identifier new SID with a secure random number generator. Let session be identified by SID equals new SID, transmit new SID to client. Example, if Mallory successfully tricks Alice into visiting HTTP, victim.example.com slash Question mark SID equal I underscore no underscore the underscore SID comma this HTTP request is sent to victim.example.com. Victim.example.com accepts SID equals I know the SID, which would normally be bad. However, victim.example.com is secure because it performs session regeneration. Victim.example.com gets the following response. Alice will now use SID equals 313499814 which is unknown to Mallory, and SID equals I know the SID is invalid. Mallory is thus unsuccessful in the session fixation attempt. Unfortunately session regeneration is not always possible. Problems are known to occur when third-party software such as ActiveX or Java applets are used, 
and when browser plugins communicate with the server. Third-party software could cause logouts, or the session could be split into two separate sessions. If the implementation of sessions includes transmitting the SID through GET or POST variables, then this might also render the black button in most browsers unusable, as the user would then be using an older, invalid, session identifier from a previous request. Equals except only server-generated SIDs equals one way to improve security is not to accept session identifiers that were not generated by the server. However, as noted above, this does not prevent all session fixation attacks. Equals logout function equals, a logout function is useful as it allows users to indicate that a session should not allow further requests. Thus attacks can only be effective while a session is active. Note that the following code performs no cross-site request forgery checks potentially allowing an attacker to force users to log out to the web application. Equals timeout old SIDS equals, this defense is simple to implement and has the advantage of providing a measure of protection against unauthorized users accessing an authorized user's account by using a machine that may have been left unattended. Store a session variable containing a timestamp of the last access made by that SID. When that SID is used again, Compare the current time stamp with the one stored in the session. If the difference is greater than a predefined number, say 5 minutes, destroy the session. Otherwise, update the session variable with the current time stamp. Equals destroy session if referral is suspicious equals, when visiting a page, most browsers will set the referral euro the page that contained the link that you followed to get to this page. When the user is logged into a site that is not likely to be linked to from outside that site, and the site is not the kind of site where users would remain logged in for any great length of time, the referrer should be from that site. Any other referrer should be considered suspicious. However, if the originating request is from a HTTPS page, then the referrer will be stripped, so you cannot depend on this security system. For example, HTTP vulnerable.example.com slash could employ the following security check equals verify that additional information is consistent throughout session equals one way to further improve security is to ensure that the user appears to be the same end user this makes it a bit harder to perform session fixation and other attacks as more and more networks begin to conform to RFC 3704 and other anti-spoofing practices the IP address becomes more reliable as a same source identifier. Therefore, the security of a website can be improved by verifying that the source IP address is consistent throughout a session. This could be performed in this manner. However, there are some points to consider before employing this approach. Several users may share one IP address. It is not uncommon for an entire building to share one IP address using NAT. One user may have an inconsistent IP address. This is true for users behind proxies. It is also true for some mobile roaming users, as well as users that are behind load-balanced Internet connections. Users with IPv6 privacy extensions enabled may also change their IPv6 privacy addresses at any time. It will not work reliably with dual-stack clients as requests will move between IPv4 and IPv6. It will not work reliably with mobile users, as mobile users roam between addresses as well. For some sites, the added security outweighs the lack of convenience, and for others it does not. User Agent Browsers identify themselves by user agent HTTP headers. This header does not normally change during use. It would be extremely suspicious if that were to happen. A web application might make use of user agent detection in attempt to prevent malicious users from stealing sessions. This however is trivial to bypass, as an attacker can easily capture the victim's user agent with their own site and then spoof it during the attack. This proposed security system is relying on security through obscurity. However, there are some points to consider before employing this approach. Several users may have same browser user agent in Internet Cafe copyright. Several users may have same default browser. But user agent may change legally in few cases. Following examples are the same users. A smartphone whose screen rotated since the last request, 
Mozilla slash 5.0 Apple WebKit slash 533.1 version slash 4.0 Mobile Safari slash 533.1854 x480 Motorola DROID2 Mozilla slash 5.0 Apple WebKit slash 533.1 version slash 4.0 Mobile Safari slash 533.1480 x854 Motorola DROID2 Internet Explorer Compatibility Mode, Mozilla Slash 4.0, Mozilla Slash 4.0 A user accessing a website through a proxy distributed across multiple servers, not all of which are upgraded to the latest version of the proxy software, Mozilla Slash 5.0 Gecko Slash 20,100,115 Firefox Slash 3.6 Mozilla slash 5.0 Gecko slash 20,100,115 Firefox slash 3.6. Defense in depth, defense in depth is to combine several countermeasures. The idea is simple, if one obstacle is trivial to overcome, several obstacles could be very hard to overcome. A defense in depth strategy could involve, enable HTTPS, correct configuration, perform session regeneration, support logout, etc. It should be noted that HTTP referrers are not passed with SSL TLS. The following PHP script demonstrates several such countermeasures combined in a defense in depth manner. Note that this code checks the current remote ADDR and user agent against the remote ADDR and user agent of the previous request. This might be inconvenient for some sites as discussed above. See also Session poisoning, privilege escalation. References. External links, Security Corner, Session Fixation, Session Fixation Vulnerability in Web-Based Applications, Session Fixation Video Example, The Web Application Security Consortium Threat Classification.